Mr. President, I rise today in support of the Budget Enforcement Legislative Tool Act that my colleague from Delaware, Senator Carper, is introducing today. I'm also pleased to be a co-sponsor of the Congressional Accountability and Line Item Veto Act introduced recently by Senator Feingold. Both bills have my support and the support of other Democrats and Republicans who typically fall on opposite sides of the ideological divide. But while we may disagree with each other on many issues, we agree that a constitutionally sound version of the line item veto will help increase both fiscal responsibility and congressional accountability, both of which have been in short supply in recent years. Establishing a line item veto has long been a goal of mine. Three years ago, I introduced legislation in the House, the SLICE Act, to establish a legislative line item veto, and I worked with Representative Paul Ryan from Wisconsin, a Republican, in the House to pass similar legislation in June 2006. We reintroduced that legislation in the House again in the last Congress. As we work to advance this bill in the House, Senator Feingold and Senator Carper were each working on similar bills here in the Senate, and they've again introduced their bills in the 110th Congress. While their bills differ in the details, they are both intended to employ the legislative line item veto as a tool to help rein in unnecessary spending and begin the difficult work of reducing budget deficits. These goals have a greater urgency than ever before. Why? Over the last decade, we've seen a dramatic change in the federal budget, a change from the worst. We've gone from federal budget surpluses to enormous deficits, and from reducing the national debt to increasing the debt tax on our children. We know how this has happened, Mr. President. Tax cuts that did not grow the economy, wars that have been financed by borrowing, reckless earmark spending, and a deep recession. And we know that today's economic crisis has required that we stimulate job creation with public sector spending to prevent another Great Depression. So our challenge, Mr. President, is daunting. In the short term, we must spur the economy back to life, even at the risk of incurring historic deficits, and yet still lay the foundation for dramatic deficit reduction in the long term. Now, we've heard some say that deficits don't matter, but this cannot go on forever. The President's own budget director agrees that if recent CBO projections are accurate, we could see a deficit exceeding 5% of gross domestic product, clearly a dangerously high level that many economists across the spectrum believe is not sustainable. No one wants our country, no one wants America to suffer from the crippling, hyper, the crippling hyperinflation that plagues Germany after the First World War, or the combination of economic decline and inflation, which we called stagflation, some of us remember from the 1970s. Again, this means laying a foundation for entitlement reform and deficit reduction. And this means using every tool in our toolbox and creating new ones if necessary to attack this problem. Mr. President, I'm a strong supporter of the economic recovery package we passed in February. It'll be important for our home state of Colorado. But I'm also mindful that we're borrowing from our children and grandchildren to save the economy from collapse. That makes it all the more important that the spending we engage in today is wise and necessary. A legislative line item veto will give Congress and the President a tool to keep our spending decisions both wise and necessary. Many presidents from both parties have asked for the kind of line item veto that can be used by governors in our home state of Colorado and several other states. In 1996, Congress actually passed a law intended to give President Clinton that kind of authority. However, in 1998, the Supreme Court ruled that the legislation was unconstitutional. And I think the court got it right. By trying to allow the president, in effect, to repeal a part of a law he has already signed and saying it takes two-thirds vote in both houses of Congress to restore that part, the Congress of 1996 went too far. I think that kind of line item veto would undermine the checks and balances between the executive and legislative branches of the government. But the SLICE Act that I introduced in 2006 and the bills that Senator Carper and Senator Feingold have introduced in this Congress are different. 
They're practical, effective, and best of all, constitutional versions of a line item veto. Mr. President, current law says that the President can ask Congress to rescind, that is cancel, spending items. But the Congress can ignore those requests, and often has done so. These bills would change that. Under the Carper and Feingold bills, the President could identify specific spending items he thinks should be cut. And Congress would have to vote up or down on whether to cut each of them. This legislation, don't get me wrong, would give the President a powerful tool, but it would also retain the balance between the executive and legislative branches. Presidents are elected to lead, and only they represent the entire nation. These bills recognize that by giving the President the leadership role of identifying specific spending items he thinks should be cut. But under the Constitution, it is the Congress that's primarily accountable to the American people for how their tax dollars will be spent. The legislation respects and emphasizes that congressional role by requiring a vote on each spending cut proposed by the President. Now, of course, without knowing, and I think the presiding officer would join me in this sentiment, without knowing what the President might propose to rescind, I don't know in a speculative fashion if I could support those proposals. But I do know that people in Colorado and across the country believe that there must be greater transparency in our decisions on taxing and spending. And I know that they're also demanding that we take responsibility for those decisions. That's the purpose of the Carper and the Feingold bill. Mr. President, if there was ever a time in our history where we need to reassure the American people that Congress understands the need for reform and integrity in the process of spending taxpayer dollars, it's now. Along with reform of the earmark process and other reform measures, I believe a legislative line item veto is an essential tool in restoring public confidence and trust in the legislative process. The American people expect that federal spending will reflect critical national priorities and broader public purpose. Most of all, they expect Congress to pass funding bills in ways that ensure wise use of taxpayer dollars. Mr. President, these are the purposes of this legislation. We must reassure the American people that their dollars and the debt future generations incur as a result of our spending will be debated in the sunshine of public scrutiny.